Good evening, and welcome to Harmony House of Deliverance Ministries Friday Joy Night. I'm Reverend Davida Hanson, Associate Pastor at Harmony House of Deliverance. And tonight is going to be a little different. We've got a special treat for you. And if I had to create a subject, it would be called Just Wrap It. Um, I have with me tonight Bishop Leonard Ledoux, who is the senior pastor. And tonight we're going to just share with you what Harmony House of Deliverance is and who we are and the vision that God has given us to go forward in serving our communities and serving you as people of God. So, Bishop. Well, welcome. I'm so glad to be here. And <laughs> now y'all see that we're together. We're not two different people in different places all the time. So we're but wait a minute. I got to say, <laughs> this is my cousin. All right. Yeah, okay? we're cousins. So we family through blood and the blood. So yeah. it's a double whammy. Right. Um, our dads were best friends. It was like a group of four of them. And they all ran around together and all sorts of fun things. And so here we are. Right. So we are cousins. So yeah, we look alike. We almost twins, but you know, <laughs> that's just the way that is. So okay, go ahead, Bishop. All right. Well, we just thank you for your time this evening. First of all, we know that a lot of people have other things they could be doing, but we thank you for spending time with Harmony House and supporting us. Uh, you've been a great support to us as we started. You know, we're a new church that just started about three months ago. And we, you know, we started in, in the middle of a pandemic, and a lot of people are wondering how would you start a church or something of this magnitude during such a time as this. Well, it's because God is driving us to do this. This is all God driven. Nothing to do with me or anything. Because I'm gonna tell you, I ran for a long time <laughs> before I decided to be a pastor of a church. Uh, it wasn't something that I just woke up one day and said, "I'm gonna be a pastor." No. Uh, just to give a little background on me, you know, I, like I said, I was ordained uh, elder in the PAW some years ago, back in 95, 96. And I preached for a while and, and I was in the military at the time. And when I was doing that, uh, you know, I preached and did things and then some things happened to me. As you know, if you've seen my testimony, I kind of strayed away from God and I ran for a, a long time. So, I, you know, I, I was prophesied to that I was going to be a pastor of a church and I just never, you know, basically... Uh, went with it. I just, you know, <laughs> ran from that thing. And, and, you know, sometimes God will give you an opportunity. When he really wants you to do something, he's going to definitely stay on you. And you'd be like, well, how, how did I, you know, I, how did I get to this point? So here I am. I finally accepted my calling again uh, when I came back here because I moved back to Kansas City in 2003, uh, 2002. And in 2003, I was kind of back in the ministry for a second. But then some things happened at the church I was at and I let myself run out again. Until uh, a few months ago, God was telling me, uh, you know, through a, another bishop, another person that um, we were speaking with, and he used them to, to tell me that you need to come back. And I was ready. My heart was pricked and I was ready to go. And Harmony House was born. So here we are. And uh, I was I had always been speaking to my cousin. She's always known my walk and she's always been telling me, you're going to be preaching. You need to, when are you going to accept your, your, your call? And I, you know, I was running. I was out there <laughs> doing my thing in the club, dancing, and just enjoying life, you know. So, uh, but life is better now because I've set my call. And I, I thank God for him not giving up on me so that I was I'm able to be here now in front of you and to be able to help those who want to be saved. So that's my job. That's my my mission to go. And we'll tell you a little bit about Harmony House. But uh, for me, I know you all that know me, I preach in every conversation. It right. just happens. Right. Um, <laughs> I've not been perfect all my life, but I've always loved God. Mm -hmm. um, I remember a time a long time ago, and some of you all that know me for a while, um, I would be putting pistols and I mean bullets in my pistol praying. You know? <laughs> so it's a whole nother part of me that uh does not exist anymore in that area. But I've always had that, you know, mm -hmm. since I was about eight years old when my parents divorced, that was a really hard thing for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. I've made, oh my God, so many mistakes. And oh, I'm no grateful way. that God loved me enough to keep me mm -hmm. and to sustain me from what could be a lot worse, you know, in my life because right, right. of some of the choices I chose to make. Right, so, you know, when I was called and asked to um, be an associate pastor, mm -hmm. an assistant pastor, mm -hmm. I was kind of <laughs> blown away. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, you know? And then I said, well, you know what? Thank you, Lord, you know, because 
I've been to a few churches because I don't fit in. I don't believe in the whole norm thing. And really? I always yeah. had questions, you know, because one of my greatest stories, uh, let it out, I told you almost how many times, I was probably six years old. Mm -hmm. And we was going from Christmas of Jesus' birth right. to March, April for the crucifixion. Right, right. And I asked the question, Right. how did he get grown in these few little months and I'm still a kid? Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> how did he go right, from this right. to this and, and Noah's Ark happened and David and Goliath happened and here we are. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I got put out of Sunday school class. Right. You know, and then I got put out again later on for some more questions I asked. but. I always wanted to know. So I always had to have that relationship established with God because I had questions that people couldn't answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we used to play church when we was kids and we used to take turns shouting when we went to church up at Christy Peace because right. the people next door that were the thieves in the neighborhood. And just so you know, I, I never was one to play church. I, I, we used to know. play church. <laughs> we played church, played we played school. Yeah. But you know, we used to play church, uh -huh. but then we would go to the BTU mm -hmm. with the Tigers, which was next door to us. Right. And we would pick a Sunday. You gonna mm. play shout this time? When the usher would come, we would stop. Oh wow! Okay, we was kind of bad. Wow, that know. was crazy stuff. But it, okay. But one of the times <laughs> it was my turn, and the Holy Spirit really had me. Uh, so uh, I stopped playing church. Mm. <laughs> I stopped doing that. That's what happened. So you know, it caught me up. So um, with that said, I've always been on a quest to know more about God. And one of the questions that I always ask, no matter what platform I was on, because I've spoken with and consulted and been consulted by preachers all over this country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just got an ordination, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Right. But um, I've always said to them, I'm not saying that the Bible is wrong. Never would I say that. Mm -hmm. I just said there's more to it. And you're right, you're absolutely right. Um, I always ask that question. God can be scrolls in 66 books. So I've looked at other books like the Quran and the mm -hmm. book of Confucius and the book of the of Taoism and Daoism, all these other religions because they all have pieces. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because that's the reason why here at Harmony House, we're, we definitely want you to know everything because there's a lot of books that didn't make the so-called canon. And that's, right. the, that's the 66 books that she was speaking on that everybody is normally used to using uh, the Holy Bible. But, you know, I can give you a whole story. And I think I, there's a video that we've done already that tells you how we got to those 66. Yes. So I'm not going to go there. But I am going to tell you, there are other books that we at Harmony House are going to be teaching and preaching from because we want to give you all of the word. Yes. Now, some people would say that those are not all part of the word. They, they, they will tell you, they'll give you all kinds of examples. Just like anything you do positive, you can go out on the internet and find something negative that, uh, that go against it. But anyway, I believe that these words are the true word of God and God has told me that. So we're going to be using a lot of those books like the book of Enoch, the book of Jashar, the book of Jubilees. We're going to be preaching and teaching from those books and the Maccabees and all this stuff. You know, these are books that should have been part and they explain a lot of the holes what i call holes in the in the 66 books because there's some things that are missing and it's because back then men were trying to keep women out of the, the bible and power trying to keep certain uh, races out so they fixed it to fit them so we don't want you to leave here without knowing the truth and that's what our mission is at Harmony house is to give you that so we're going to be giving you the truth now, everybody's not going to understand or maybe not be able to comprehend all of it. But if you ask God for the understanding and the wisdom, he will give it to you. And we're going to be the ones that help you get there. So that's one of our goals. One of the things, too, uh, Bishop, is how do you think that man had the mind to send this rocket to Mars today? Good question. How do you think that man had the mind to build highways and byways and things like that. When they say that you were a caveman or a person that was a cave person, which that came from somewhere else too, we'll get into that with you guys as we teach. Right. But you were supposed to be a Neanderthal, but you came up with all this. Okay, we understand you evolved because that's what we do as humans. You're no longer a baby. You're no longer a teenager. Some of us are seniors. Some of us are middle-aged. Some of us are youthful but you evolve and that's what we're telling you to do. Open your mind. You cannot have faith in a God that you cannot see physically without an open mind. Absolutely. That just don't work. Absolutely. You cannot believe in that unless you have an open mind to receive that. You cannot believe in that unless your mind is open to how are the stars hanging in the sky? 
How come the sun has never fallen to earth? What's keeping it up there? We can say gravity and all those things, but who made gravity? How did this happen? So you have to have an open mind to receive all things. You can take one scripture and start reading it today and read it for an entire year, that same scripture every day. And I can guarantee you it will say something different to you every day. That's absolutely true. So the open mind thing is what we're telling you to do. I'm not saying open your mind to the nonsense of, you know, a bunch of foolishness that people say, like, if you don't eat grapes on Sunday, you're going to hell. Okay, that's just <laughs> stupid. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Some things you just don't have to be dogmatic about. Mm -hmm. But open your mind and your heart. And that's the longest distance anyone can ever travel. Because, see, a lot of people in the church have God here. They got Jesus here. They got the Holy Spirit here. But he ain't got here. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. You are right on point. That distance is... <laughs> right. Well, one thing I do want to add to what she's saying is this. Uh... You gotta have that open mind. And God wants you to have an open mind. You, you know, you have to be able to see and, and to be able to take these books that we're gonna be teaching from, you gotta have the open mind. But I'm telling you, once you get that eureka moment, you'll see that these things make sense. Now, some of it might be a little, you think might be far-fetched, but like I said, you gotta ask God. And everything that we're gonna be teaching you here, you can go and find out for yourself whether we're telling the truth or not. We're not telling you you got to believe us. But you must have an open mind to be able to understand it. But there are some things there that just, that's 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 there, and you, when you get that aha, uh -huh, it's gonna be like, wow, you know, that does make sense. It's it, I mean, it, it is mind blowing. But the Book of Enoch is one book that explains so much. It, it's it's the plan that we have right now. It's actually the blueprint on how to make it through these end days. Mm. That book is very important, and it explains Revelation. A lot of people who read Revelations; they get confused because it's it's written in code. But if you have the book of Enoch, it explains all the code to you. But see, a lot of things, like I said, was, was put together because they wanted to keep women out of power. They wanted to keep certain people in certain places. Like even with Mary Manley, there's things about her that you need to know. There's things about what really happened in the garden. There's things that you need to know about Satan that's, that's not being taught because they want you to have the one aspect of who he is. But let me tell you something. If once you learn these books and you read about these other things in Bible study and things we're teaching, right. you're going to find out that the power of Satan is not as much as you think it should be that they tell you in church. You know, he is just not that. And we're a sinner. Yeah, we're, we're a church, but we also are a sinner because we have other things that we do. We're going to get into that. But. What I want us to do today, I want us to... The bishop is going to give the vision of what Harmony House, what God gave him. Right. And we're going to tell you about the various ministries that we want to, that we are uh, visualizing happening, that we are speaking in and working into existence because faith without works is dead. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes God sits us down as we see through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Because we have a whole lot of things going on. We got earthquakes happening. The regular stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. Hurricane season, earthquakes, all this other stuff, <laughs> along with this other thing. Right. You know, with the coronavirus or the COVID-19. Uh, it's so much stuff out there about that, guys. Let me say this. Please, 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 please take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. And then just pause. Just understand the media is just going to pause. Tell you, the media is going to tell you a lot of things uh, because that's their job is to keep you confused. And of course, the enemy is involved in that. But let's just be clear. A lot of this that we're going through is because of our disobedience and what we're going through Thank you. in our life by not serving God and not keeping him first. The so, wickedness of men. That's right. That was in Genesis 6. I started reading that this morning. Right. Right? The, the wickedness of men. And right. that was way back in Genesis, y'all. So right. guess what? And it's also in the book of Enoch explaining why they were wicked. But anyway, there's other books that we're going to be going into. But let me give you a little bit of the vision that God gave me about this, this thing. Yes, it's a church, but it's more of a center. So the we, I call this what he has given me, the New Jerusalem Developmental Outreach Initiative. Basically, so we're going to have some outreaches that you normally hear about that some other churches are doing, but 
God has given us to the, the mission to have a shelter in place ministry, which means if there's women or a man or anybody who has an issue, they may have been burned out of their house or something of that nature. Uh, could be some battered women issues or battered men or any, whatever the case. We're going to have a ministry, hopefully in place soon, that will be able to, because it's going to happen, that's going to be able to, someone can come to and be safe where they can get away from that person that's beat them or that's hurt them or that person that, that you know, that's not treating them right in their kids or, or the kids are being molested. Or whatever. We're going to have that shelter in place ministry where they'll be able to come and under Harmony House and be able to be under our help. So they'll be able to have that. Or they had a fire. Or a fire or something that happens where they or even if they just displaced. Or even if they just lost their home because they were behind on their bills or something, right. and we can help them that regard. We want to do that. That's something that God has put on my heart and our, our hearts to be able to do to help one of the ministries. Also, we want to do a hot food kitchen where we have maybe three times a week we'll have food that is available to people as long and, and also have a, a pantry that we can be able to give maybe twice a week or twice a month we'll be able to give some food to people you know that need it i mean i know a lot of churches are doing that right now because of the pandemic they're giving a lot of food and, and right now in missouri uh people in kansas city shouldn't be starving at all because there is so much food being distributed out there right now yeah. so just don't get it sell it but yeah don't get it <laughs> yeah don't do that but, and, but also we want to have the, the regular stuff like the daycare ministry food pantry like i mentioned i want to do small quantity cooking courses because when I was in the military I used to I was I'm a chef I, I'm a certified chef I can teach I want to have something where we can help people that want to learn how to cook for their own and not only get the food and stuff but they'll be actually working in our food kitchen and they'll be learning there they'll be the actual people that's cooking the food that will be given out to people that's in need at the time in the area that needs it so those are some of the things that I'm looking at that I would like to do as well and that God has given me to do he also said that we should have some type of resume preparation and job interviewing uh, stuff that we right. can help people to be able to, to go out and look for jobs and stuff. But the one that I really like that he told us that he wants us to do is the veterans claim preparation. Now, they have a lot of programs for vets out there. There's a lot of stuff out there for homeless vets and all that. You know, you have the tiny houses and all that stuff. But there's really nothing out there that helps them to do their preparation. Now you can go to, as a veteran myself, I know that I can go to the VFW or I can go to uh, American Legion or something and they'll do the paperwork for me. But with us, we will be able to help you and, and guide you on how to do it so that you can learn how to do these things on your own and not have to go to those people for that. Of course, we want to have counseling services for those who have PTSD, those who have any kind of issues that's going on in their life, not only military, but people that's living out here every day. Somebody dies. That's PTSD. When you, yes. you go through a shock of something that goes on in your life. So we want to be able to have that. And we want to do youth programs that include after school training kids, help them for college prep, get them ready to be able to take the AS, ACTs and stuff. Because eventually we will be back to that kind of thing. It just will be in a different way. Maybe it may not be in person, but it's still you'll be able to do things virtually. And one thing God has shown us that you don't have to be together, that, that jobs are now all virtual. You yeah. can do a lot of things <laughs> online. You can do a lot of things that, you know, uh, that has, That's true. you don't even have to be in person. They're finding these things out. And we want to do senior citizen programs where we can help senior citizens get on Medicare, and help them with their social security claims. These are the, the the things that we are looking at that God has given us for Harmony House Ministries uh, for, under the New Jerusalem Development Outreach Initiative. And, and we want to make these things come to fruition. In the next year or so, these things are coming slowly but surely. We're going to have that. Yes, we're also in the process of getting it built. The reason why we haven't pushed hard on that right now is because of the pandemic. God is saying to us that Maybe next year around this time is when we really need to have a building. But right now, I want you to concentrate on doing the ministries online where people can have access to this ministry, not as only, not well as not just ours, but others that they can choose from to see who's really giving them the word. Because there are some churches that are still trying to operate like a church. And God is changing the whole system of how churches are going to be. It's going to be a lot of this, what we're doing right now. I mean, a lot of these brick and mortar churches are going away. The only reason why we're going to have a building is mostly going to be because of the outreach that we're going to be offering. It's not so much as the church services. Right. Now, we will have some, and we're also going to be doing some things in our church that some aren't doing. We're going to have, I don't know if I can mention this or not, but we're going to be having the, the 12 tribe initiative. We're going to be doing things with the tribes the way they did back in the day. Absolutely. Because those things are still supposed to be in place. A lot of churches are not preaching that 
that these things should be still going. I think that's when Jesus right. came, that's it. All that's part of the law, but that's not true. Even when he was here, he was still doing the feast. Right. His life, death, burial, and resurrection is the four first feasts. The four feasts that we do is represented in his death, burial, represent, uh, uh, resurrection. Yeah. So I can go on and on. I don't want to take up all the time. No, but I'm just saying, okay. I mean, I said for you to share the vision. Right. And, and that's what we're doing. You know, the thing is with the with the feast, I yeah. always ask, why don't we do that? And I was always told, well, we're not Jewish. But we're following a Jewish man. That's right. We're following Christ. Christ didn't say, don't follow me. Right. Yeah, he's Hebrew. He did not say, change what I'm doing and make it your own. He did right. not say that because even after he left, the disciples still acknowledged and did the feast. That's they right. still did those things. They still had passion. It changed when man put his messy hands in it and started making it what he wanted it to be. Right. Not what we were supposed to be doing. Absolutely. And we have gotten so far from God. You know, um, I've said numerous times, and it frustrates me that we have become an entertainment center. Right. A lot as of opposed churches to a have. church. Absolutely. And a preacher said, and, 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 and it's really ironic because I caught this out of everything else he said. He said, God has anointed people to have a voice to sing and to be able to play instruments and things. And they're not using their anointing because someone else can play them to in their line right, or sing right. better. But they're not anointed. Yeah. And that, that anointed voice is what the people need to hear because they didn't touch their souls. So when the brother says, I'm like, okay, I can dig it because I've said that numerous times. There are some that are anointed. There are some that are appointed. Mm -hmm. Just like with Saul and David. Right. Absolutely. Good example. Saul was appointed. David was anointed. Right. Right. So Saul's jealousy sent him into a rage of, of madness. Right. You know, and which was causing the demise of him and his son. Absolutely. You know, so we have to think about that. Sometimes that appointment singing can get your emotions. And because, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the appointment is, is sometimes what we do as saints out here. <laughs> We want to see God move around. Even the, the Israelites, they wanted to see God. They, they, they wanted to have a physical person. And that's how Saul got into, into, into yeah. being where he was anyway. He was tall and handsome and was appointed because the Israelites wanted to have a king because all the other countries had kings. <laughs> right. so they wanted to have somebody. Right. So they put him in place. But he wasn't the one that was supposed to bring them forward. David was. And, and as you know the Bible, if you read it, you know that David eventually came into the to where he needed to be and to take the children, uh, you know, uh, the Hebrews forward. But getting back to Jesus being Jewish, a lot of people think that when you say Jewish, okay, he's a Hebrew. But they say, when you say Jewish, they think about the Jews that came out of, out of Germany and all that stuff and they want to put color into it. But let me tell you something. Let's stop doing that because it ain't about his color. What you gonna do when you get to heaven? You gonna go up there and you see God is, is a white man, you ain't gonna go in because because he's white? Right. You know, we need to start looking at the, at the truth. You know, it's not about color. It's not about where we came from. Are we the now the Israelites that God called? Or, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that's confusing people right now. But all God is expecting from us to have faith, be obedient, and to serve him and, and keep him first in everything we're doing. It ain't got nothing to do about no color or none of that. And at Harmony House, we teach that. That's what we're teaching you. It ain't no white Jesus. It ain't no black Jesus. It ain't no all that. We ain't even going there. We even use his real name, Joshua the Messiah. We use Yahweh Elohim. Somebody asked me, well, are you using that name, so are you an Israelite? They're not the only ones that know the true name. You know, the, you know, you have you have Jewish Christians that use that because they know that's the true name of God. So we are here to give you the whole truth, nothing but the truth. We're not gonna sugarcoat it. We're not gonna be entertaining you. If you wanna be entertained, then Harmony House is not the place for you because we're not gonna be up there doing all this and the Lord and all this old mess. we're going to read you and we read you and all that we're going to do what God wants us to do now I'm not saying that shouting or nothing like that's going to happen because I shout it will happen but the thing is is we're doing it genuinely it's not going to be entertainment where the music is on somebody shouting as soon as the music go off they sit down it's not going to be none of that y'all ain't listening to me or while the music but I'm just is telling playing you, or you the shout, there, you know, hitting them keys harder than everybody getting on right, the bandwagon kind of stuff because they're trying to entertain you so if, if, you, if you want those kind of things from a church, then you continue to go to those. But God has called us to do a new thing and to bring a lot of the oldness back. When the first, when, when, the, when they were called Christians in Antioch, a lot of it was homes churches. People were coming together at home and doing things. That's, That's right. what God is trying to get us back to. Because right now, 
Elohim wants us to be more close and get away from all this prosperity preaching that you see. He's tired of all of that. Oh, if you get this prayer cloth, you, God will give me prosperity and all this. He's tired of all this people being uh, crooks and pimps in church. That's what's going on. So I'm just giving it to you the way God wants it to be given. And we're going to give it to you the right way. You know, it ain't about titles here. Yes, I, we have titles. But that's because somebody has to be in a certain position in the church. It doesn't mean that you better. I got to get in heaven just like you. You know, I'm not automatically going to get in just because of bishop or doctor, or whatever, reverend, so and so, whatever. It, it don't even matter. They ain't listening. I really don't even <laughs> tell people about spiritual because when people, when you give them a title, people have a tendency to treat you differently. Mm -hmm. I want you to respect me because I'm a woman that you respect. Right. Absolutely. I don't want you to just respect me because I have reverend on the front of my name. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want you to respect me, period, for who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times, People throw that title out there to gain respect. Absolutely. But that title, if I don't respect myself, that title don't give me no more respect. Go ahead and preach. It's a false thing. And <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it for me, uh -huh. people of God, mm -hmm. we here. I want you to examine you and your relationship with God. Not the one the preacher told you, not the one that Sally next door said. Not the one that you was raised up to do because it's a habit. Examine your relationship with God. Yours. That's right. Examine your feelings, your time. Examine, I'm going to just be real. I like to dance. I do too. I like music. And some of y'all like know me. Y'all know, know I, I, I be out there two-stepping. I, I have a love. I, you know, that's what I used to do. I like to dance. Right. I like to live my life. I laugh and joke with my friends. We talk smack. These eyes look at a good looking man. I'm not blind. We don't have to just stop being human. That's the thing I want you to understand. You don't have to do all that mess. God will prick your heart and change you if you give it to him. That's right. Like I told y'all earlier, baby, I was 245 south. Okay? Was ready for anything and everything. But guess what? I always had God with me. I wasn't always following him the way I should have. He took things from me. He took uh, so many things from me. And I don't miss him because he allowed me to have so many things. In church, we constantly told, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. There used to be a time they said you couldn't wear makeup in church and all that right, stuff. Right, but now people with eyelashes as long as my ponytail. I know some people. <laughs> and I know some people that, that didn't get their hair uh, you know, processed or anything because of church. God didn't say you had to walk around looking like a sock. But when you come before him, I'm going to just say this. Can I say it, bitch? Mm -hmm. Men and women. If you put yourself out there as a garden tool, and y'all know what I'm talking about, right, right, right. then that's what you're going to get back. That's right, that's right. But if you put yourself out there as being a person of respect, we get a twist on love. That's why we got these ministries in place. That's why we're looking to do things because Jesus came to heal the man. That's right. Came he to came to heal us broken people. We broke it. We a hot mess. Right. And Jesus came so that we can be healed. That's right. That our brokenness can be put back together. We're like Humpty Dumpty. Well, let me let me let me say this way. What churches are failing to do, and at Harmony House, we're gonna make sure that we don't do this, is tell people that when you get saved, just because you're saved, your flesh don't, don't stop doing those things. No. You're still gonna have those uh those feelings of whatever it was that was had you bound. But it's how you go through it. When you're saved, that makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. So yeah, you still gonna have feelings of I want to drink, I want to do this, I want to do that, and there's gonna be things that. And I'm not saying you can't drink. I'm saying you know you, when you do stuff over. If you look in the Bible, a lot of the stuff is when you do stuff overdoing. When you overabundantly do stuff, that's when it becomes sin. Or if you put it in before God, that's when it becomes sin. Now I'm not telling you to go out there and sleep around because that that ain't right. But what I am telling you is this: those things that you have in you are gonna still be there. But how you combat them with the spirit and have a God in you is how you get past those things. Yes. You still will have feelings of masturbation, feelings of whatever you go through, whatever's going on through you. I'm just saying some things. I don't know what's what you're going through. Right. But whatever it is, it's going to be there. And you can fight those things, but you got to have God's word in you. You got to have a relationship with him. And you got to be able to be obedient to what he's telling you to do to get past it. And you will get past it. And you might fail sometimes. And you will fail sometimes. You know, I mean, you we, will. Ain't we, no might. You will fail. Sometimes. We look at this drinking. Right. 
God saved mankind with his own. That's right. His name was Noah. That's right. Noah, Noah was, was drunk. Original. Yep. We can go through a whole list of different <laughs> you stuff. You know, we can take you through all kinds right. of things. You know, we look at Jacob, who's the daddy of the 12 tribes. Right. Jacob was a liar, a conniver, a manipulator. That's right. You know, and he had a thorn on his side. So we're going to have a thorn on our side. Some things <clears throat> stay with us to keep us praying. Because if God took everything, we then wouldn't, you wouldn't even you wouldn't acknowledge him. You wouldn't acknowledge him. You wouldn't we, have a reason to. We'd be tripping on ourselves. So, That's why. You know, it's more to this thing than walking around being stiff necked and, and all the holier than thou. Let me tell y'all something. I wear my collar sometimes just because. What? But that collar don't define me. It don't define there me. There are gonna be times after we are moving around again freely that I'll have to wear a robe. And I have my own reason for wearing a robe. But my robe is being made. And you know why? Because I don't need all the gold and the drapes and all that stuff. I really just wanted a graduation robe. Because people will be tempted by whatever. But sometimes, I was told this years ago, in my heart, that God wanted me to wear a robe and I got to preach before him. Mm -hmm. Because it's a couple of things that go with that. We have to do what God leads us to do. Mm -hmm. Obedience. And, you know, I'm, I'm the, the uh, prodigal son. I'm the prodigal daughter. And I'm okay with that. Because I know that my dad accepted me home mm -hmm. when I came back. Mm -hmm. He'll let me run around for a minute. Then he said, okay, little girl, come on back. That's right. He did the same thing to me. I'm telling you, and I was out there victim. But you know, at Harmony House, that's just we want harmony in this house. That's right. We want deliverance in this house. He ain't all the way delivering I need. And and you ain't gonna be until you leave this this flesh. But that's what God gave us. Right. Friday joy night, y'all we get ready to do some real cool stuff. You know, one night we're gonna have two steps. But it's gonna be a little twist on that, so be ready. Oh, I didn't know about you that. You know, uh, we already look, we already got turn up Tuesday, okay? Right, 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 right. Okay, when you say you turning up, that means you turning up. Right. So turn up that word. You know, I tell you all the time, put on your favorite song, get your best drink, and sit down and take this journey with me. Mm -hmm. I say that to you more often than not. But these ministries and the things that we're putting forward, because everything you do should be a ministry. Right. Everything. You know, a lot of people know I'm not ashamed to say it now. I desire to be married. There was a time I was like, I don't want no husband, uh -uh, that's too much work. But you know, that was a lie because I go on to say, Lord, yes, I do. We that was double-minded. We want you to be yourself in this church, but we also want you to understand that we, we want you to respect God. We want you to, to understand that he is the one that we were created to serve. And that's mm -hmm. what we're teaching him. He, we were created to serve him. He doesn't. He's not saying you can't have things. He ain't saying you can't be rich. But as long as you put him first before all of that, you can have those things. And that's what we teach. And that's what we teach at our church. We're not trying to take nothing from nobody else. But those churches are doing what they, they think they need to do. We're not the traditional church. We're not going to be teaching prosperity or nothing. But we're not saying that you can't go out there and invest your money or whatever. And, and, and another thing that God is doing with us, he set this up in such a way that we're not going to be begging you for your tithes and offerings all the time. Now, yeah, if you want to give, we'll accept that. But I'm not going to be up there begging you for nothing. I'm not going to do that. That's not what we're here for. We're here so that you can be delivered. And God will prick your heart if you, if you need to give or whatever you need to do. But, you know, a lot of times churches are, are built up and they're, they're built on your monetary, what you get. And they don't care anything else about you but that. But we're not that. And we're not going to be that. And I pray that God, is, he's already given us, showing us ways that we can have things to take care of, to finance a lot of these things we're doing, but we don't have to be in your pocket. So God provides for his people. That's right. He takes care of his home. And um, I've seen it happen. Not just for me, but at a church. Mm -hmm. God gave me a prophetic word to give to my, a, a pastor. And I shared that word with him. And God has done some amazing things. Um, that church that I was attending was my home. I just need y'all to know that. And I still love him. Okay? Mm -hmm. And nothing's going to take that from me. Right. But... It's a lot of new things going on, people. A lot of new things. And what I want you to do is, it's hard to break tradition. Mm -hmm. It's hard to break habits. We're not telling you to go and, and throw everything in the trash. We're not telling you to do that. 
But what we are telling you is to examine your relationship with the Lord. We're here. If you need to talk to us, if you need to uh, connect with one of us, we're available for that. Our information is on the screen when we get ready to leave here, get off of here. Yeah. The ministry that we have in place for those that God put on our heart. Veterans are always, most often looked over. You know, they go to fight for our freedom and then they're treated poorly. A lot of things with women, you know, that abuse thing. It's quick to put a woman's face to it, but men get abused too. That's right. You know, when people overlook that. Yeah, sure the thing we need to look at is when God pulls his stuff together, it ain't no failing. No. It works and it's a connection. Mm -hmm. We've got people that are watching us online and I invite you to continue to watch us, continue to learn from us. Uh, we're going to change some things. My work schedule, cause you know, I'm still working. God's going to do some things with that as well because of the place he's taken me to. So I'm embracing that, looking forward to that because now everything is you know, irritating me because I want stuff to happen like right now. I'm kind of impatient, but I want you to know I'm very compassionate about people. My cousin and pastor tells me all the time, step away, Sometimes step back, you know, but I'm very passionate about people. I love my family. I love people. And a lot of times, you know, people think they kind of sucker punching me, but I already know down the road what, you know, cause God does show me. And sometimes I scare people, mm -hmm. but I can't be anything but what I am and who I am. God is in the place of removing people from your life. He's in the place of shifting things in your life. So don't be too thrown off here when those things happen. It'll hurt. You're hurting. You're going to go there. It's okay. But we're here to help you through that. We're here because God put us here. Friday joy night is getting ready to be full of joy. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to see the bishop and I together today to let you know that we are a team. Yes, we are. It's not just to him or me, okay? His wife is my cousin. We cool in the game. So don't nobody get it twisted. You know what I No, I'm running something and he's running something. Right, right. He is in charge. He's the head. But we're a team. That's right. And I don't want anybody to think they can get, say something to me and get over because if you bring it to me, I'm going to take it to him. Unless it's truly confidential. You know? Absolutely. And I have to be discerning in that. But I want you all to be cautious and how you open your ears in a time like this. Because right now, people are fearful. Do not be afraid. We don't serve a God of fear. Right. Do not be intimidated by the woes of the world. Do not be bogged down with the war and rumors of war. Right. The best war right now is the spiritual war. All of those things. Things are in place. The relationship back with you that we lost with you. And that's the reason why the pandemic is here. It's because we have walked and strayed so far from him, not just the United States, but the world. Yes. We have strayed so far from him that he was just tired of all this mess that's going on in the world. And I'm not gonna give you a list of things because you know what's going on out there. He just wants us to step back and take a look at ourselves like she's been saying and understand that he needs to be first. Just like it says in First Chronicles uh, uh, 7 and 14, you know, he, he's, and I'm just gonna give it in my words. He tells you that if you would just come back and, and leave your wicked ways, that he will forgive you for that. And you know, we just wanna make sure that you understand that uh, he doesn't hate us, but when, 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 he, when he does harden your heart where you won't be able to come back, that's, you don't want that to happen because God gives us plenty of chances. We're with perfect examples of that. You know, we were running from God for a long while, I was. I ran for the longest and because I didn't I didn't want to be no pastor. Well, <laughs> either I'm gonna be a pastor or I'm gonna go to hell. Which one is he gonna be? I'm gonna be a pastor. Because I love him first of all. Not because he's making me, because I love him. And that was always a passion in my heart, anyway, to do this. But I was just trying to run away because I didn't feel like I could do it. I couldn't see it. We gotta open our eyes. Yes. And what I mean by that is it's not the eyes that your your cardinal eye. You gotta open your spiritual eyes so you can really see what's really happening. There's a lot of things that's going on with the media and stuff like that. They're trying to scare you and all this. But if you open your spiritual eyes, you'll see. And I know people don't want to hear this, but Trump is in office because he's supposed to be. God put him there because he wanted to open our eyes so we could see some things. Exposure. It's exposure. 2020, the year of vision, is an exposure year. And I know y'all don't want to hear this, but 
he's coming back. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about Trump is going to get reelected. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Now he we ain't going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about it. He, <laughs> but he ain't going to make it through the whole term. We ain't going to talk I, about it. I just it. remember he was saying that. But anyway, we thank God. We love y'all. And, you know, I just, I'm just glad that we was able to We're going to do this more often. You know, I might yes. even do it on a Sunday sometimes. Yes. You know, it depends what yeah. God leads us to do. Because we do everything by the spirit of God who leads us on what he wants us to do. Right. And, you know, maybe a turn up Tuesday will be on one of these sessions. You know, a Sunday is always going to be, uh, unless he says something different, it's always going to be a sermon. So, but we always want to make sure that you understand that we're not out here just because of the pandemic. We're here because God called us right now. Because he's doing a new thing and he wants people to see a new thing. Yeah. And that's what's going on. It's got, I, I, we're not here for no money. You know, we, 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 we can use some money, but we're not here for <laughs> the money. We're not here for that reason to be trying to get in your pockets or to steal people from other churches. Right. No, we're not. We're not here to do that. But some of y'all, we must tell you the truth. Doing this, you might get some disappointed because you're going to find out the truth because he's opening things. He's going to expose people. You might find out some things at your church ain't what you thought it was. You might find out some things about some people that's in church that you thought was that ain't going to be what you think. And you're going to be hurt. But we're here to help you pick up them pieces. Because that's what our job is for. You know, there's going to be people. And don't put your pastors on a pedestal. We're not supposed to be on a pedestal. We're people just like you. We're trying to make it in heaven just like you. So stop putting them pastors on pedestals and thinking that they automatically going to make it in just because they, they preachers. That ain't going to happen. That ain't true. And if they think that, then... <laughs> They got some uh, rude awakening coming. Well, you know, but anyway. I just want to say, we're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. We gave you a glimpse of Harmony House. Feel free to, like I said, ask us any questions about what we're planning, how we're planning to accomplish some things. Uh, one of the things I just want to kind of throw in there is we're working towards doing something with the Pan Hellenic community, right. with all the uh, Black Greek fraternities. Yeah, I'm a member, as you know. Y'all don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I uh, am. Yes, I am. Anyway. We're working on that. <laughs> uh, we're going to partner with some people that do have buildings and do a couple of food giveaways and things because I think that that's something that needs to be seen in Absolutely. the community as well. So Absolutely. Um, God gave me that right idea. So we're working on that and we're working towards really just making sure that the community knows that God loves them. That's right. And we are him in our hands and in our legs and in our eyes and in our minds that he uses. So we want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I'll be back next Friday with some words about um, Exodus. It's going to be exciting, so be ready. And that's going to be a two-week uh, thing um, that God gave me. And um, as always, get your best music on, get your favorite drink, and don't hesitate to join us. So thank you again for joining us here in Mommy House. And you have a great and blessed week. And I just want to say this too before we go. Also, just don't forget to come on Sunday. And you know, we, we changed the time to 11 a.m. It used to be at 1.30. Uh, it might be in conflict with others, but the good thing about this is you can, if it's recorded, so you can always come right. back. If you can't come in 11, you know, come in another time. And But give us a chance. Give us a chance to, to, to come into your house and be able to show that we, we do love God. And I'm not saying that these other churches don't, but I'm just telling you, it's not a competition anyway. We just want to be able to show you that we do love the Lord. And, and, and also, Turn Up Tuesday. Do that. Because there's always going to be some teaching on Turn Up Tuesday we're going to give you. You know, we've been giving you different things on different parts of the other Bibles. Different things like why the resurrection, uh, how that three-day thing it was explained last week. Just like the next one's going to be on the feast, so you will know why the feasts were necessary. So we're going to be giving you all the stuff you need to equip you in your, your walk in God. And that's what we do. So I'm Try gonna, something new. Yeah. Try something new, yeah. Just try something yeah, new. So. And we know a lot of you all haven't been in church in years. We want you to know we understand that too. That's right. Because I've been out. I was out of church for some years. It didn't stop me from having a relationship with God. So that's right. just know that we are not a church. We are a ministry. That's right. That's so absolutely. get the church out your mind. That's right. We are a ministry. Get all that old traditional that stuff out of your mind. Uh, right. We are a ministry. We are not a church. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to seeing you online. Like I said, give us a call. If you got issues and problems. We're here for you. And God bless you. Enjoy your weekend and be safe. Wear your mask. That's right. All right. <laughs>